music lifted up to the glory of God. I invite you, if you'll turn with me, to the reading of God's Word to Mark, chapter 8, beginning with verse 31. Wednesday nights we're going through the book of Acts. 
two Wednesday nights ago, we went through Acts 10 and Acts 11, we find that Peter recounts his vision again. And the vision that comes to Peter to eat the unclean meat. This is some years, some scholars say many years after Pentecost. And he uses the life of the Gentile Cornelius to help Peter to open his eyes along with the vision of God. And Peter's eyes are open and his heart is open and he receives the message from God. And he associates with the Gentiles and he preaches Jesus to the Gentiles, to all people. And I say that to say this. Here Peter walked with Jesus during his three years of ministry here on earth. He had been there at the resurrection, at Pentecost. And yet, years later, God is still opening Peter's heart and his mind to his truths and to his ways. Peter is receptive. But you know, often times it takes time for God to work in our lives, in the lives of others. Seems more times than not, it is process, a journey. But we need to be careful that in our journey, in our personal relationship with God, that our eyes, ears are open, that our hearts are receptive to the Word of God, to the Holy Spirit. We need to see and hear God's voice clearly. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Where are our treasures? Where are we spending our time and our money and our energy? Are we investing it with the Lord Jesus Christ? Do we have an eternal view of life? Eric, talking about heaven. Friends, we are sojourners here. We are passing through. We have a window of opportunity to live our lives for the glory of God. But we need to keep in mind that the world's ways, Satan's ways, that they are not the ways of God. And Jesus calls us to the ways of God, the eternal ways. In our text, we see the certain honesty of Jesus. No one can say that they follow Jesus under false pretenses if they listen to his words. Jesus never tried to bribe people. He never tried to offer them the easy way out. Jesus did not come to make life easy, but to give life to those who would trust in him for salvation and follow him. To give eternal life and abundant life. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up the cross, and follow me. Are we willing to say no to sin and self and yes to Jesus? Now the disciples and the early church, they suffered in ways for Jesus that you and I know nothing about. We've only read about it and heard about it. We have brothers and sisters in the world today who are suffering as we gather here to worship today for being a follower of Christ. We hear on the news and see again and again where a brother or sister has been murdered, killed for their faith in Jesus Christ. I don't understand, we don't understand why God calls some to give their lives and not others, but Jesus calls us all to say no to self, 
sin and yes to him. Jesus certainly didn't take the easy way. He certainly didn't take the convenient way out. He followed God's way and God's way led to the cross for Jesus. We live in a time in which things are convenient in society. We gather here. It's a beautiful fall day. We'd be fine. 68, 70 degrees, whatever it is outside. There's no air or heat. But we gather here on the hot days. We gather in the comfort of air condition. When we gather here in the cold of winter, we gather here in the warm of heat in a comfortable place. You know, as I look at this passage and see, you know, I have a hard time identifying the persecution. I've never been persecuted for my faith. I can think of very few times I've ever been shunned for my faith. Friends, God calls me, just as he called those disciples and you, to say no to self and yes to Jesus. And Jesus promises us that if we'll say yes to him and follow him, he'll give us eternal life in heaven. If we'll live for him today, he'll acknowledge us before God. Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, don't lay up for yourselves treasures here on earth where moth and rust destroy, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven that are for eternal, that are forever. Friends, we need to be focused on Jesus, on his ways, on the eternal ways. Jesus teaches there's a price to be paid for true discipleship. Jesus knew that most were following him because of the miracles, and most were unwilling to pay the price of true discipleship. Jesus called them, and he calls us to surrender our lives completely unto him. Will we, will we be willing to? To identify with him in suffering. In saying no to self. Yes to Jesus. Are we willing and do we desire in our heart of hearts to be obedient in following him and pleasing him? Our lives are to be spent pleasing God. We are called to die to selfishness, to take up the cross and follow Jesus. You see, Satan promises you glory here. But in the end, with Satan, there is destruction here and for all of eternity. But if we follow Jesus and live for him, he will one day acknowledge us and we'll be blessed for all of eternity. We must decide, will we live for self or will we live for Jesus? Will we trust the Word of God? Will we trust the light, the words of Jesus and stake our all on following Jesus, on surrendering to Him, for Him being Lord of every area of our lives? And friends, for that to take place, you and I, we've got to make changes in our daily lives. God has not yet stopped speaking to me since I became a follower of Jesus and calling me to make changes. God calls me to say no to self when I've got plans. God has other plans. And God uses other people to open my eyes to his plans and his ways. He uses my wife. He uses you and others. And he uses us together. And as I look at this passage, I say that Jesus is calling me. He's calling you. Take up the cross. To deny self. To follow him. As I look at this, I also see that Jesus is calling me to have an openness in my mind and in my heart to the ways and truths of God. With
with Peter with the vision in Acts 10. If Peter needed his eyes open after walking with Jesus, after his death and resurrection, and after Pentecost, friends, you and I need our eyes to open to the will and way of God. God used the vision. God used the Gentile Cornelius to open the eyes and heart of Peter to take the message, the good news of Jesus to all people. And friends, if we're going to take the good news of Jesus to those that God is calling us to share, we need our hearts open and receptive to God. Our eyes open. We need a steadfast spirit when we're willing to be obedient unto the voice of God in sharing the good news of Jesus with others. We need to be looking at ways to share the good news of Jesus. On the video, God had called that lady who had been raised in a carnival family atmosphere to share Jesus. He's probably not going to call me. If he does, I hope I'm open to that. But that way, but God's calling you and I to share Jesus in our community with our neighbors, with our loved ones and others. God's calling us on a daily basis to say no to self. Yes. And he promises us eternity. Jesus says, if you give your life away for me and others, you can. It's an odd time math, isn't it? The more we give ourselves away, the more we bless. No. Friends, let's give our lives for Jesus. Let's give our lives others, men and women and boys and girls, and come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Let's give our lives away and our families. Let's go home and love to serve one another. Let's live for Jesus. Let's say no to selfishness. Let's say yes to Jesus. We'll be blessed now. As the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts, won't we say yes to Jesus? He's calling you to salvation. Let today be the day of salvation. Come and receive Jesus. Trust in Him as your Lord and Savior. You're here to follow Christ and God is to speak to your heart. The altar is open. I'll down front, Pastor Mike's here. I pray with you. Come. However, God is speaking to your heart. If you're a member somewhere else and you believe God's calling you to serve your name, God, won't you come as we listen and are being to the Holy Spirit?